There are heroes in this world who have abilities that are far superior to those of humans, and everyone has this ability individually. They protect the peace of ordinary people and the world from villains. Without such heroic people, chaos would ensue and the world would be mired in darkness. They are all loved, respected and very grateful for their contributions to society. But often, good guys are envied by others. People watched recordings of fights in the public domain. The girl and the guy admired the hero in black clothes because he defeated the huge villain with one blow. The guy looks carefully at the picture of a person on his phone. Then he turns his gaze to the young man who was sitting opposite them. And he thinks Kelvin looks like the hero who fought in the video. Kelvin says that he had too much and after that, he was vomiting wildly so he could not possibly be at the battle site. After hearing this, Edgar agrees. Suddenly, Calvin receives a text and tells his friends that he will go to the bathroom for a while. On the way, Calvin watched the news, which said that the recent hero who defeated the villain had suddenly disappeared. Finally, Calvin went into the toilet and locked the door behind him. A moment later, the same person mentioned in the news appears in the toilet. Calvin tells the hero that he risks getting into trouble if he gets caught. The hero taking off his helmet, says that it is very hot in it, and Kelvin need not worry. The guy adds that suddenly revealing his face is the most effective way to draw attention to the mysterious hero. Kelvin invites Lucas to reincarnate back, since he is unusual in seeing himself. Lucas used his ability, and before our eyes, he began to turn into another person. As the transformation ends, Kelvin suddenly grabs Lucas by the chin, and asks if he was alone with the girls, since his face looks too joyful. Lucas replies that he has done this many times, to which the interlocutor nods approvingly. Kelvin says to wash his suit and praises Lucas for the job he did. The guy wonders in bewilderment whether he was a hero or just a regular badass. Lucas had superpowers, but even though others have them, not everyone can become heroes. Therefore, Lucas replaces the hero, borrowing his real personality, and he simply plays the role of a double. Twenty years ago, people with superpowers began to appear all over the world. The world plunged into chaos and lawlessness. It seemed that this was the end. The police could not maintain the previous peace and order. People appeared who wanted to use their abilities for personal purposes. Law enforcement agencies were unable to stop the destruction, and a lot of civilians suffered. The government urgently approved a law that was supposed to dispel the chaos. People with superpowers were divided into villains, who did not obey the rules, and heroes, who had to stand up to the villains. At the villains' headquarters, in one of the luxurious rooms. The leader of the Alliance of Villains was called Knighton, and he mocked the adopted law and did not understand what its benefit was. Before that, pathetic policemen came to them, trying to capture the villains. Nathan didn't believe there would be any heroes nowadays. Suddenly a window breaks and a masked hero with a red cloak appears. The villains were amused by the image of the hero in latex and his concept. The hero, turning to Nathan, says that he will punish him, according to the first paragraph of the Law on Heroes and Villains. Nathan replies that he is too weak and he will beat him to death. The villain attacked the guy with the intent to kill, but the hero did not retreat, but accepted the battle and used his ability. The next moment he punched Nathan in the stomach. The villain flew into the wall, destroying it, and fell to the ground. He asked the guy who he is and where he came from. The guy called himself a hero named Justice. Later, this victory made Justice the most popular hero and mark the beginning of a heroic idol. Lucas has the ability to copy, but he cannot fight villains with this ability. The guy came to his home. A stream of thoughts swallowed him up. Lucas was jealous of heroes with strong superpowers and the fact that they could live their lives to the fullest. But despite this, he had a way to make money. Although this is illegal, the heroes themselves come to him with requests. Ultimately, Everyone is trying to make money to survive. Lucas set himself the goal of working hard to earn a lot of money and retire at 50. Suddenly there was a knock on the door in the middle of the night. Lucas decided to check who this uninvited guest was. Opening the door, the most popular hero appeared in front of him. The man asked the guy if Lucas lived here. The man was Justice. The hero asked the guy if he becomes a double of the heroes while they are on a mission, in order to preserve the secret of their identity. Lucas was scared since his activities were illegal, and he had no chance to escape, since justice himself was against him. The flow of his thoughts was stopped by the hero's request to become his double. The guy asks in bewilderment why a hero like him needs this. Justice says he is aware of Lucas's client confidentiality service, thus avoiding answering. The man brought everything he needed and opened the suitcase with documents. The guy says that there is no photograph on the documents without a face. Hearing this, justice takes off his mask, 
revealing his face. Lucas asks when he should start work, to which the man replies that he needs to start tomorrow. Justice gives a business card and tells the guy to come to the address. Lucas wanted to ask a few more questions and ask the man to wait. But when he followed the hero, he quickly disappeared from sight. The next day Lucas came to the indicated address, there was a huge building there. The guy did not believe that he had come to the exact address indicated, because it did not meet his expectations. Justice was his complete opposite, as he could protect another person with his body. Justice approached him, but he couldn't miss this opportunity to make money. If he works well, he will acquire good connections for the future. With such thoughts Lucas entered the room. The room was spacious and luxuriously furnished with an armchair and two sofas in the center of the room. Lucas entered the room and suggested discussing the details of their collaboration. But as he got closer, he realized that Justice was dead. The guy got very scared and jumped back. He was in shock and bewilderment because he did not believe that someone could kill the number one hero. The guy decided not to rush to conclusions and decided to check. Just a slight contact caused him to suddenly get an electric shock. He couldn't understand what it was. At the same moment, a strong explosion occurred and the room was illuminated by a bright blue light. From this explosion, the guy flew to the side, and Justice's body fell to the floor. The last thing the young man saw was a blue light. The next moment his arm ached wildly, and his veins bulged. Immediately there was a strong pain that could drive anyone crazy. The guy definitely saw the light emanating from the use of his abilities. He realized that he urgently needed to leave before anyone came. Lucas didn't know what happened in the room before he arrived. But he knew that if he stayed there, he might get into trouble. He ran at full speed, scaring people coming towards him. Suddenly he collided with a man and spilled his coffee. Seeing who he bumped into, Lucas was surprised by the familiar face. This person turned out to be Kelvin, who did not understand why Lucas was in the same place. Lucas was glad to see Kelvin, as he was a first-class hero. Lucas continued to hold his paralyzed arm, but when he paid attention to it, he realized that everything was fine and it didn't hurt. Kelvin said that the guy would need to clean his expensive clothes, and even if he worked all his life, he would not be able to buy them. Suddenly they heard the sound of a window breaking, but did not attach much importance to it. And while the guys were talking, an enemy attack was approaching them. They attacked Kelvin in the side and caused him significant damage. Kelvin doubled over in pain and did not understand what was happening or who was attacking them. The green-robed villain stood in the broken window and was disappointed by the worthlessness of the boy who was being discussed on social networks. He added that he was just a worthless worm and not worth attention. Lucas was very surprised by the villain's sudden appearance and immediately connected his appearance with the murder of Justice. Kelvin got angry after hearing what the villain said and used his ability. He replied that he would make fried squid out of it, and he pounced on the villain to make the first attack. The villain jumped up, thereby dodging the hero's attack. Wasting no time, he made a counter-attack with his tentacles in the air. But the guy, using his ability, easily repelled this attack. The next moment he attacked the villain again, saying that he would destroy him. But this played into the hands of the villain, and he grabbed the guy with his tentacles. The guy did not expect such a trap and tried to free himself from the grip. The villain says that the guy is stupid for thinking that there are only four tentacles and he has already lost. The tentacles began to strangle the hero, and people seeing this began to scatter in different directions, losing hope. Lucas couldn't believe his eyes. He didn't think that the villain could easily defeat Kelvin. After a short time, the guy stopped breathing and the villain was disappointed by the weakness and stupidity of the hero. The next moment, the villain took on ordinary people and attacked everyone indiscriminately. The villain enjoyed watching people suffer, and Lucas managed to hide behind the counter. People were shaking with fear, and they were waiting for justice to appear. They knew that he would cope with this villain. But Lucas knew the terrible truth that justice was dead. These people would die waiting for a hero who would not even come to their aid. Lucas was afraid he could not cope with such a villain. He wasn't even a hero, and couldn't compete with people with strong abilities. And in the noise and confusion, Lucas' thoughts are interrupted by the crying of a girl. Unfortunately, the villain hears her crying and turns his attention to her. The girl sat on the floor and rubbed her eyes with her hands, because she was lost, and she was very scared. Lucas could not watch the girl being killed and began shouting at her to quickly run away. The villain was amused by this, and he immediately attacked the child. The girl could only watch as the tentacle approached her at great speed. Suddenly, 
a picture of his younger sister dying appeared in Lucas's memories. He couldn't bear to watch the scene from the past reappear before his eyes. He made a lunge in an attempt to protect the girl. Lucas didn't know what to do and just instinctively tried to stop the tentacle with his hand. The guy wasn't sure if he could stop the attack. At the moment of contact with the tentacle, lightning sparks appeared. Finally Lucas was able to stop the tentacle with his hand. The villain was very surprised that his attack was stopped. Lucas unknowingly turned into justice, thereby protecting the girl. The guy felt that a completely new force was acting in his hand. He forcibly tore apart one of the villain's tentacles. Thus, he caused significant damage to the villain. Justice doesn't know what's going on here, but he says he will punish the villain according to the first law. Lucas felt that his body was filled with a huge force that he could not properly control. Despite this, it was his first time fighting a villain and he had no absolute confidence in victory. The villain did not expect justice to appear and he says that all his attempts are useless, since his tentacles have endless regeneration. Wasting no time, the villain rushed to attack, planning to kill justice, just like that boy hero. But all the villain's attacks were very slow in justice's eyes and he easily dodged each of them. He easily avoided attacks and approached the enemy. The villain was surprised that his attacks were so ineffective. The man, approaching the attacker, raised his fist. The next second, the villain flew away from a strong blow to the face. But that was not the end. Justice grabbed the villain by the tentacle, and with great force he threw him into the wall. Lucas had not yet fully mastered his new powers, and did not expect him to fly so far from a simple throw. It was an amazing power that had to be controlled, and used wisely. While the hero was thinking about the situation, the villain had already gotten up and attacked the guy. Justice clenched his fist and was ready to finish off the villain with the final blow. But suddenly his strength began to fade, which put him in a dangerous position. Lucas realized that the process was the same as the first time, and he could not control the transformation. This was very bad, because without Justice's power, he could not do anything. The villain was approaching the guy very quickly, and it seemed that time had stopped. Suddenly, the villain was attacked by a yellow flash of light. She hit him and he flew far to the side. The bad guy was finished and Lucas was very lucky. A young girl named Ashley came to the rescue. She admired Justice, and was amazed at how he calculated the moment for her attack. But he didn't actually have enough hearing to hear her approach. But he was glad he survived thanks to Ashley. The girl admires Justice's speed and asks how he got to the scene before everyone else. At the same time, the villain tries to escape while the heroes were distracted by conversation. But he didn't know that Ashley had a long-distance superpower. She shot yellow beams from her eyes and struck the villain again. She was amazed at the stupidity and arrogance of the criminal, since he decided to attack Mr. Justice. Turning around in front of her, there was no one, and the girl wondered where the hero had gone. Ashley wanted to get an autograph, but a woman in a black hood tells her to come to her senses. She reminds the girl to take care of the wounded to which Ashley replies that she completely forgot about that. The masked girl's name was Camille, and she was surprised that Justice was able to survive. She noticed a guy in a white jacket running away from the building. This guy was Lucas, who wanted to get away from the scene as quickly as possible. Camilla looked thoughtfully after the man running away, but did not attach much importance to him. In the evening the light was on in Lucas' room. He shredded all the documents he received from Justice, and decided to get rid of them. Having gotten rid of the documents, he decided to think about what to do next. Since Justice was the most powerful hero, it means that the villain who killed him was of a higher rank, and Lucas blamed himself for not thinking of reincarnating himself before escaping. And thanks to this oversight, he heard an unfamiliar voice. The voice said that Lucas was very scrupulous, since he decided to get rid of the documents, having first shredded them. The guy was scared by this voice and he didn't see anyone in the area. He kept looking with his eyes where the voice was coming from. The voice came from below, and an unfamiliar figure emerged from its shadow. The guy was very scared and fell on his back in surprise. Finally the figure stood up to its full height, and that voice belonged to Camila. She used her ability, and shadow hands tore open the bag of documents. By manipulating the shadows, she returned the paper to its original state. Lucas, looking at this, could not believe his eyes since he had never seen anything like this before. All the documents that he shredded were safe and sound. Camilla carefully examined the documents. The next moment she asks Lucas rhetorically whether he saw that Justice was dead. She adds that she doesn't want people knowing about this as they could hurt her. Camille attacked Lucas with her ability. The guy realized that the girl wanted to kill him 
and he had no choice but to fight. Justice died because of her, then he must be serious. He understood that he would not be able to catch the shadows like the tentacles of that villain, but their attacks were similar. His plan was to avoid the attacks and retaliate at close range. He suddenly felt that the transformation would soon end. He did not have time to approach Camilla, as the time of transformation was coming to an end. Camilla realized that the guy in front of her was just an inept imitator. She adds that the guy is stupid for deciding to imagine himself as a fearless hero. Lucas did not intend to die. With the last of his strength he broke the asphalt and lifted a block of stone, and he used it as a shield from Camilla's attack. The girl was surprised at the guy's dexterity and intelligence, and she didn't notice how the guy managed to get close to her enough to reach her. At a critical moment, Lucas struck with an uppercut from below. Camilla was even confused for a second because the guy turned out to be not such a weakling. The guy wanted to strike a second time, and had already swung when he suddenly realized that he could not move. The girl says that the guy did a good job, but he came to an end because he stepped onto her territory. Shadows enveloped him and lifted him into the air in an attempt to strangle him. His breathing was cut off and he could not breathe. But suddenly the girl began to think, looking at how the guy was suffocating, and the next moment she cancelled her ability. The guy didn't understand why the girl let him go. Camille asks him if he will continue to do what he was doing before. The guy doesn't understand her, but she says that he is not an ordinary person. The young girl wonders if he wants to continue playing the role of justice. The man didn't know what to answer, because he didn't understand what was going on in this woman's head. She explains to him that if people find out that the number one hero has died, then people will panic and she needs a person who can buy her a little time so she can understand the situation. The guy jumps up and asks who she is and why she tried to kill him then. She replies that her name is Camille and she is a hero who was under the leadership of justice. The girl says that the documents contained information about her, but it seems that the guy did not read them. After looking through the documents, the guy finds her and makes sure that her words are true. Camille says she only wanted to intimidate him into cooperating with her. The heroine adds that she will pay him a billion every month if the guy agrees to cooperate. Lucas was very surprised when he heard this amount, since it was much more than he had ever received. He asks her what will happen if the truth comes out and people find out that he is just a fake. The girl tells him not to worry about it because she will support him and make sure no one finds out. Camilla adds that she has no intention of forcing him, but he must understand one thing. If the villains find out that justice is dead, they will rise from deep sleep and begin to create lawlessness in the city. A full-scale war will begin between heroes and villains, and many innocent residents may fall under the hot hand of this war. She tells him to make the right choice. But Lucas didn't know, or rather didn't believe in himself, because being the number one hero is a big responsibility. The girl understands that the guy is not able to do this and leaves, telling the guy not to talk too much with his tongue. Lucas stops Camille and says that the calculated amount does not correspond to all the risks and his importance as the number one hero. He offers to do the job for two billion. The girl agrees and tells him not to complain later, since he signed up for this himself. Over the next week, Lucas studied documents from the Justice Archives, since this was the most effective way to remember him because he had to know the one he was trying to copy. After that, Camilla picked him up and they hit the road. Justice's death hidden from the heroes as well as the villains. Camilla replies that they don't need to know this, and if they wanted to know, they would have known about it a long time ago. The guy doesn't understand what she means and looked at her questioningly. She replied that he would understand everything himself if he saw everything once. Their destination was Logistics Center. The girl says that he was not mistaken, but this is only on the outside. The camera scanned Camille and the doors opened automatically. In fact, this building was the headquarters of the heroes. Before Lucas's gaze appeared a huge golden statue of justice and a large number of different heroes. The atrium, that is, the headquarters, was very well camouflaged, since the import and export of various things took place here. Lucas was surprised to see so many heroes interacting with each other in a carefree manner. Some were eating or drinking tea while others were flying in an unknown direction on their own business. Finally they came to a huge door and stopped. Camilla tells the guy that she wants to test the waters and that he shouldn't go there with her. She adds that he should not attract attention to himself, and just watch from the sidelines. The vast room also contained many heroes, and hero meetings were usually held here. The key leaders of all four hero teams have already gathered here, and they vigorously discussed topics that worried them. A girl named Helen was unhappy that it was their group, Guardian, 
that was blamed for the increasing activity of the villains. Derek replies that it was on their territory that the greatest activity was noticed. He held first place in the superhuman team. And the man adds that in other territories activity has become less and this shows that they are not working well. Helen replies that it is not their team's fault that their territory attracts a large number of villains. Norman, the second most powerful of the superhumans, adds that it is not fair to allocate most of the budget to those who perform poorly. Arthur, who occupied the first place in strength in the union team, tells him that he is not worthy to be called a hero since he only thinks about money. Lucas spied on the progress of the discussion through the crack in the door, and was amazed that even among the heroes there were divisions. Sigmund asks where Justice went. This guy ranked first in strength among the members of the El Condor team. Norman says the rumors about Justice's death may be true. Helen got angry and said that he should be more careful with his expressions, otherwise she would not let him go so easily. The man says that he is not afraid of her, and that she is nothing in Justice's absence. Beatrice, who was the second strongest member of Team Union, tells them to calm down. She says that they are no longer small children and should not organize the circus at every meeting. But the girl is also concerned that Justice hasn't been seen for a long time and thinks he might be in danger. She turns to Camila and asks if she has contacted Justice. Camille replies that Justice needed to leave for a while. Paula, who was second in El Condor's team, says that Camille is lying because due to the fact that Justice was gone for a long time, she decided to visit his penthouse, and she adds that she saw a pool of blood on the floor. The girl's sweat dropped and answered somewhat hesitantly that it was illegal to enter someone else's house. But everyone present was interested to know whether what Paula had just said was true. Camilla was in a difficult position, since she could not avoid interrogation if Paula saw everything. Justice enters the room, confirming that Paula is telling the truth. Camilla didn't expect Lucas to show up, as she told him not to stand out. Justice apologizes to everyone for being away for so long. He leaned on the table and said that he could explain to them what happened. The heroes were surprised by Justice's sudden appearance. Lucas knew he couldn't leave Camille to them and he would be found out, so he showed up to trick everyone. A minute before, Lucas heard the hero's conversation and, in particular, what Paula said. After her words, he noticed that the atmosphere in the hall worsened, and the heroes began to whisper. The guy understood that at this rate no one would believe Camilla's words. That is why he decided to appear on stage. Camilla was shocked by Lucas' actions, because if he made even the slightest mistake, he would be exposed. The guy was amazed at the number of heroes who gathered in this room, and although he was nervous, he had confidence that he could play the role without arousing suspicion. Because he studied everything about justice, from the length of his stride, the timbre of his voice, and even his usual postures. Norman asked Justice where he had been, and why there was blood in his house. Lucas decided to tell them that there was an attempt on his life, since they already knew about the blood, in his penthouse. There was a buzz of discussion and exclamation throughout the room as people were surprised that Justice had personally said about the attempt on his life. Helen was very surprised to hear Justice's words. She says that he should have told about this, at least to her, to which the man replies that he could not tell this too soon. Since the situation was not typical for him and Camilla, it was necessary to conduct a thorough investigation. He adds that as soon as he finds leads, he will immediately notify them about it. He then asks Paula who gave her permission to enter his penthouse. The girl squeezed the toy tightly and replied that she was very worried. The hero sighed and said that now the investigation would be much more difficult since those who were involved would become much more careful. Paula apologizes for ruining everyone's plans. Derek says that he can't believe this story, that someone is capable of making an attempt on his life. He adds that someone should have noticed such unrest in the city center, and his story needs to be checked, since Justice could have set up the incident. Paula replies that Justice has no reason to lie and Derek is simply too meticulous. But suddenly he adds in a serious voice that Justice has begun to miss too many villains, caring only about the safety of citizens. Sigmund agrees with the girl and says that the hero should not worry about one or two lives when something more serious is at stake. Therefore, based on the above, they suspect that justice may have made up the incident. Lucas was amazed that these characters had such a bad relationship that they want to rip each other's throats out. Arthur calms everyone down and asks them to stop, saying that justice has reasons why he cannot tell the whole truth. He adds that they have a more important topic to discuss and suggested moving on to that. Everyone tempered their ardor and curiosity, sighing and falling silent. Lucas was at a loss for words, 
but fortunately they began to discuss other issues. The meeting ended, and then Lucas set off by car. Camille throws him a soda and says the guy did a good job, but he says that he made the porridge himself when he appeared having made such a hasty decision. The guy replies that everyone would have guessed that Justice was dead if he had not appeared. The young man asks the girl why everyone is hostile against Justice. She replies that personal interests are divided into teams. For example, the Guardian team are natural defenders who put the safety of citizens first. The El Condor team are undertakers who are trying to incinerate the villains in every possible way. Team superhumans who consider themselves outstanding people and think that since they became heroes, they are the chosen ones, and the Union team is an alliance that pursues only its own interests. Hearing this, Lucas realized that heroes are no different from politicians. The guy also asked what kind of hero Helen is, to which Camille replies that Helen is a talented young girl who has never lost to anyone, and she is Justice's loyal subordinate. Upon hearing this, Lucas said that at the moment when he mentioned the assassination attempt, Helen pretended to be surprised. But if you look closely, you could understand that she was not at all dumbfounded. He noticed this as his ability is to copy others down to the smallest detail, and he is very sensitive to changes in facial expressions. But for now, it was too early to draw hasty conclusions just for this reason. Finally they stopped abruptly, and the car door opened. Camille got out of the car and said that the villains began to weaken, and the heroes, on the contrary became stronger with the advent of justice, and she added that the guy would be able to see the end of this era with his own eyes. After watching the mission to exterminate the villains, she says that all teams must take part in this mission and justice is no exception. The girl says that after justice appeared, all the forces of the villains were scattered across several strongholds, and today they are clearing one of them. The four teams decided to come in from different directions, with Justice set to appear first in the center of the park. Lucas does not agree to immediately go fight alone with the villains since this is suicide. Camilla hands him an earphone and says that to earn two billion, you need to work. She reiterates that Justice is the number one hero, and if he doesn't participate in the mission, then all their efforts will be in vain. Lucas replies that he needs a bonus of two billion for risking his life like that. Heroes and villains were in a fierce battle. Everyone wanted to emerge victorious. Arriving in the city, Lucas realized that there was a one-sided battle going on here and Camille said through the earphone that this was due to the fact that there were more heroes than villains. Ashley suddenly approaches him. She is glad that they met again. The girl is indignant that someone dared to attack Justice and even think about it. He realizes that Ashley is a real fan and she asks him to tell her if he finds the intruder. Suddenly, a villain will attack the man aiming for his head. The girl did not notice when this guy appeared and did not have time to use her ability. But Justice himself dealt with the villain, simply hitting him with his fist. Lucas didn't use even half of his power to avoid causing a premature transformation, and he hoped that this would be enough to defeat weak villains. The next moment he leaves Ashley, telling her that he has things to do and they will talk next time. On the way, the guy met villains who wanted to kill him, but he easily defeated them and ran on at full speed. Lucas had no idea that he could copy the abilities of the dead, and if he had known about this from the very beginning, then perhaps his family would be alive. Suddenly, Camille interrupts his thoughts and tells him not to waste time fighting, otherwise he might be late. The guy realized that with his new ability he could help other defenseless people. He ran at great speed towards his destination, but suddenly a spear landed in front of him causing him to slow down his speed. A man named Kaiser appears and says that he will be honored to fight justice. Lucas does not understand who this man is, since he saw him for the first time. Camille explains to him that this is a villain who kills heroes for fun and that for now this is too difficult an opponent for him. The guy realized that since he couldn't cope with him, he just needed to get around him. But Kaiser grabbed him by the neck and threw him down to the ground. And the next moment the villain set up his own coliseum from which it is impossible to escape. Once he was trapped, the man had no choice but to fight. Justice struck his opponent, but he could not bear any kind of injury while he was in the Colosseum. The villain struck with a spear and did not understand why everyone was afraid of Justice if he really was a weakling. The man says that in order to defeat him, the hero must make every effort. Lucas thought that if he used all his strength, a forced transformation would immediately follow but he suddenly realized something. Kaiser didn't know whether Justice was holding back or not, but that was a good thing, because if he died, the heroes would stop attacking. But suddenly the man easily caught the spear, 
stopping it a millimeter away from him. Lucas realized that a super ability is like a glass of water and the more it is used, the less water there is in the glass. But the size of Justice's ability is not comparable to a glass, because he had a whole sea at his disposal. The man was full of strength, but just tried to keep it longer. And from the very beginning, being Justice, it was not necessary to do this. A worried Helen sat in the room, unable to find a place for herself. The secretary asks what happened, and Helen asks her if the report came from Justice. The girl replies that the report is quite late, and perhaps Kaisar is in the way. The girl got up to set off, as she doubted that the villain would be able to detain Justice for so long. Helen wanted to see for herself what had happened. The villain, looking at Justice again, saw that he seemed to have become a different person. Lucas realized that each time he forcibly restrained the power in his body and caused a forced transformation, and he wanted to see what would happen if he released it completely. Suddenly, as if with the snap of a finger, the battle became one-sided. Kaiser then added a second layer of the Colosseum to increase his chances of winning. He thought that now he could easily defeat Justice, but the man had never been so wrong in his judgment. The hero, using his strength, destroyed the spear with his bare fist. A man could simply look at the approaching fist and not believe his eyes. He could not believe that the difference in strength was so great. Lucas breathed a sigh of relief, because for him it was a rather dangerous fight. The guy turned around towards the noise and saw the buildings being destroyed. It was the hero from the El Condor team who fought. The young man realized that these were not easy guys because he heard that they were too focused on the villains that they did not notice anyone in the area. The villain repelled another powerful attack from the hero, and this attack, reflected, hit a nearby building. Lucas realized that the building was about to fall on him, and he had to quickly run away. Kaiser was lying nearby, and the guy was thinking that he would die if a building fell on him. But this villain tried to kill him, and it shouldn't matter to him whether he dies or not. Out of his kindness, he nevertheless raised the villain, since he could not watch him die. He hoped that when the villain opened his eyes, he would change, realize how beautiful the white light was, and follow the laws. On Justice's way, buildings collapsed one after another. He no longer had time to escape and was simply waiting for it to fall on him. But Camilla suddenly appeared and said that she would support him at any time. The girl used her ability and threw the debris of the building to the sides. She scolds the guy for deciding to protect the villain and says that he should be more serious. The guy replies that he couldn't watch a man die before his eyes and he acted like Justice's benefactor. Suddenly the man wakes up and pushes the hero away from him. The villain takes Camilla hostage and demands that she follow all his instructions. The girl tells the man that this is the result of his benefactor. The guy shouldn't neglect Justice's place with such an irresponsible attitude. She adds that it doesn't matter whether she dies or not but he must not miss Kaisar. Camille says that this villain is the main one here and Justice's authority will fall if he misses him. Kaisar was furious that he was being ignored, and he reminded that he was going to kill the girl. Lucas says he won't let that happen. The next second, Camilla felt a strong blow of wind. The young man realized that no matter what happens, villains remain villains. The guy says that he will personally deal with the problems that arose because of him. Camilla sighed and said that the guy has high ambitions but he needs to send a report. Justice reports that he has arrived at his destination. The man laughed, saying that it is not very easy to earn two billion one. Camilla knew that Kaisar, although eccentric, was a worthy opponent, and no matter how great Justice's strength is, this villain is not someone who can be defeated by yesterday's skills. The girl thought that Lucas was just a boy obsessed with money, but suddenly she realized that she could rely on him. From above, on the roof of the building, a man was watching them. This person was Helen from the Guardian team. She felt that something was wrong with Justice and the situation. When the job was done, Lucas breathed a sigh of relief. He was lucky that no forced transformation occurred after the loss of self-control. Camille says that she is glad that the guy can freely control Justice's power. The young man was a little embarrassed that the girl became kinder to him. Also, during the mission, Lucas decided to see if he could also absorb another person's ability. When touched, a reaction occurred. But there was an unpleasant response that was reflected in my head. There was definitely a reaction, but nothing more, although for a moment he felt the power being absorbed. And then, the process was forcibly terminated halfway. The girl suggests that the guy can only absorb one ability, or that Justice's power itself is too strong. The guy says that it is too early to draw any conclusions, since there is little information, and the girl agrees. Camilla says that either way, 
they worked hard and deserve a rest. This always happens after the Guardian team wins. Everyone was happy that justice had appeared and that they had won. Lucas realized that a lot of people believed in him. He took a glass of beer and drank it in one gulp. Two people stood outside the room and looked with contempt at how they were having fun. Derek started to leave and said that they wouldn't be happy for long. Norman asks the man if he has a plan, to which he replies that it is possible, but in any case, everything will change soon. The next morning, in Lucas' new penthouse, he woke up with a terrible hangover and his head was pounding with pain, and he was even ashamed to remember what the heroes did yesterday. However, upon leaving his room, he was amazed at the luxury in which he would now live. In addition, two billion won were transferred to his account. Lucas is very happy that he has finally achieved unprecedented success. However, it won't end there, because Justice was actually killed. On the table was the autopsy report provided by Camille. As a result, no injuries were detected, but the activation of the ability was revealed before death. The guy was very curious to know the truth what really happened. He heard a noise and thought it was Camila who had come to discuss the details of the document. But to his surprise, it was Helen. The guy hid behind a chair and didn't understand what Helen had forgotten and why she came here as if it were her home. Helen calls Mr. Justice because she heard his voice. She asked what he was doing there, hiding behind a chair. Lucas turned into Justice and pretended he was training. Helen was very happy to see the man and praised his persistence and discipline. The girl heard that there had been repeated assassination attempts and this needed to be discussed, so she came. Finally the young man understands why Helen was cold-blooded at that moment. Suddenly the girl hugged Justice, and she said that it was too much when he didn't even say anything to her. The guy couldn't understand what was happening and asked Helen what she was doing. The girl reminds him that she asked him to call her Helenaka when they were alone. Now Lucas realized that the two were romantically involved. Justice met with Helen, but nothing was said about this in the archive. This means that Justice decided to hide the fact of their relationship. The girl asks why he is silent, but Lucas did not know what to answer. He decided that just calling her by her name would be okay. Justice apologized to Helen and made the excuse that he forgot because he rarely calls her that in public. The girl, hearing this, was serious at first, but then smiled. Helen says she feels hurt because he doesn't change his attitude towards her, even in private. She adds that this made her feel awkward. The next moment, the girl attacked the guy with lightning speed with her sword. The girl turned cold and said that at first she even believed that he was really Justice. Lucas was very surprised, because a second ago he almost lost his life. Helen says she will cut off his hands before asking questions. The girl, along with Justice, is a member of the Guardian team and holds the position of Deputy Commander. And she was born with an ability that was very powerful. This ability was called Speed Aster, that is, ultra high acceleration. The entire interior of the house was cut very precisely and neatly. The guy realized that the girl had honed her movements to perfection. Helen attacked again, and Lucas, activating the ability, asked her to wait. The girl is a little surprised that the guy was able to copy even Justice's ability, but he adds that he is wasting his strength and energy. The guy understands that he cannot continue in the same spirit, and he needs to come up with something. So he decided that he needed to attack back and use the ability. Helen now understands how he defeated Kaisar, and she says that it was only the result of an inept waste of strength. However, the same tricks will not work on her. The girl made a series of attacks with lightning speed and caused significant damage to Justice's body. Helen says he will never beat her if he continues to fight like this, and she will cut him in the most merciless way if he resists. But if he falls on his face, the pain will end. The guy does not agree to her terms, and the girl rushes to attack. She stabs him in the chest with a sword and blood flows from the wound. Lucas says he was unable to land a single blow on the girl because of her speed. But now, she will not be able to move from her place, since he grabbed her hand. Although the guy struck a blow to the head, he couldn't even knock it out. Lucas was very surprised, since he was counting every newton of his strength to send the girl to sleep. The man had a bad feeling so he decided that he needed to deliver another series of blows before it was too late. In an instant, the girl standing in front of him disappeared from sight. Helen asks the guy to stop resisting, since he is delaying the inevitable, she will deprive him of his hands in any case. The girl used her ultimate ability, destruction of the enemy of humanity, a thousand blows. Lucas came under pressure where with every second he received a new blow from the sword. And at this rate they could really cut him into small pieces. Suddenly, in their intense fight, 
a new ability appeared. Helen realizes that this ability is familiar to her. It was Camilla. She said that she knew that Helen was very sensitive towards justice, but did not think that she would guess so quickly. The girl understands that Camilla was also involved in this matter and asks her to explain everything. Then she decided not to delay but to say directly that Mr. Justice was killed. Helen realizes with horror that Justice was killed, and they staged this circus with disguises so as not to shock others. Camilla says they had no choice and had to act quickly to prevent this death from causing more problems. The girl replies that it was too noticeable. Even though the guy has Justice's abilities, he absolutely does not know how to use them. Camilla says that she understands everything but now it is much more important to gain as much time as possible. Lucas agrees because in order to investigate Justice's death, they needed to clean up the mess. The girl says that this is absurd and the killer could return to kill them both. The guy says that it is unlikely that the killer will return, since they are the only ones who know about Justice's death. The girls don't understand what he's talking about and ask why he decided that way. Because yesterday there was a complete mass murder of villains, but so far there has been no reaction to this. Helen asks that even though it is not known who the killer is, will he think that there was a failure in his murder? The guy says that this is unlikely, to which the girl simply sighed. The girl decided to leave for a walk and put her thoughts in order. Helen was the only one who followed justice faithfully, and now her head is probably a mess. And now she has become the only link in the Guardian team, since before justice monitored the routine within the team. But now in his absence the heroes can scatter, leaving Helen alone. Camilla is indignant, since such people do not deserve to be called heroes, and they were no different from a herd of sheep that need to be led. That's why they must carry out their plan at any cost, so that the heroes do not leave their posts, and hope burns in the hearts of people. Lucas finally understood why Camille got involved in this adventure. Suddenly the girl received a message and told the guy to prepare for the second mission. They came to the dining room and the guy could not start eating because everyone was looking at him. Everyone was surprised to see him, and wondered why he was there. The man does not understand what he needs to do, to which the girl replies that everything has already been done. She explains that he recently had an assassination attempt, and he needs to show everyone that he is okay. The guy understood, but it was hard for him to pretend that he was just eating in front of everyone. The girl tells him to get used to it, but this will happen less in the future. Today is a special day when initiation among heroes takes place. Camilla pointed to the heroes who are going to the biggest event in Ardium. In this event, the heroes decide which of the four teams they can join, and it is similar to an open day at universities. Justice realized the enormity of this event and asked what he should do. Camilla replies that they need to go, and she will tell everything along the way. After a while, they came to a large stadium, Lucas was so surprised that he involuntarily made a sound of admiration. The girl tells him to be calm, otherwise someone might think that Justice was scared. Camille says he doesn't have to do anything, answering the question that's been bothering him. She adds that the strongest hero does not need to prove his strength in the arena. He just has to sit quietly and watch what is happening. Looking at the number of people in the ranks of the respective teams, one could draw a conclusion. Guardian has lost his value compared to the Union, and in humans team. Each team member has enormous power, and it is not surprising that they want to use it for their own purposes. Suddenly they saw Helen come to them. She sat down next to them and said that she just decided to play along with them, but she was still not on their side. Lucas does not understand why there is such hostility, because he was not the one who killed Justice. Finally the performance began and two heroes entered the arena. The Guardian and Superhuman teams has begun. As soon as the command was given, the heroes entered into battle. Adam activated his ability and attacked Jack in the stomach. Jack was thrown back by the force of the blow, and he praised the enemy for his agility and speed of movement. The next moment the men continued their battle. Lucas did not understand why the heroes should fight, to which Camilla replied that this was a kind of PR for their team to attract people. Justice says it's just a friendly match to show off his strength then, to which the girls said that these matches can hardly be called friendly. In the arena, meanwhile, Adam knocked Jack to the ground and broke his wrist. Lucas couldn't bear to watch and stood up, telling them to wait. But Camilla stops him, reminding him that she told him not to do anything. Although there is some bullying, these fights are fierce battles for power between teams. So, in essence, he is not doing anything illegal and even Justice has no right to interfere. Adam asks why Jack doesn't give up, is he really waiting for injuries to both hands? But then he apologizes, 
because he realized that he cannot give up while his hand is chained to the floor. Adam says he'll probably start breaking his hands, but suddenly he is stopped by someone's hand. The girls were surprised and could not understand what this boy was doing. Lucas entered the arena as he remembered his younger sister, who admired the heroes. She believed that only thanks to heroes they could live safely and peacefully, and he couldn't watch Adam with a grin beating up a hero like himself. Justice says he should be ashamed of his behavior. Adam doesn't understand what he's talking about, he says and replies that he has no right to interfere. The guy asks what the number one hero will do if he doesn't listen to him. Adam decided to attack Justice with his ability, because it could control gravity and enhance magical power. He was going to blow up the would-be hero who had so casually grabbed his arm. But Justice simply squeezed his hand, causing damage and preventing him from activating the ability. The man says Adam could have just let Jack give in and not hurt him. Derek suddenly appears and saves the hero from his team from Justice. Derek activates his ability and pushes Justice back. He says that the number one hero needs to fight someone of his own level. The newcomers were surprised that they would be able to see the Battle of Legends at the very beginning. Helen stood up from her seat and wanted to stop the fight in any way she could. Camille also understood that Lucas could hardly control Justice's power. Considering how he had used the power before, he had no chance of winning against Derek. Justice says there is no need for them to fight and they can resolve everything peacefully. But the man does not agree since his authority will suffer if he backs down now. Lucas realized that there was nowhere to go, and he went on the attack, activating his ability. Derek blocked his blow and said Justice forgot something. The guy felt the power leaving his body and could not understand what was happening. Derek activated his ability and said it was his turn to strike. Justice managed to block the blow with his hands, but in doing so he injured his hand. All the attacks he threw at the man were useless, and he simply fought back and fought back. The battle was one-sided. Lucas realized that Derek could project his own attack. The man said that Justice was losing his grip and had become somewhat weak. The guy just took one blow after another. The observing heroes could not understand what was happening and why Justice allowed himself to be beaten. Derek's ability is to absorb other people's powers. He absorbs any enemy power. Then he attacks with the same force, but with a multiplied coefficient, adding his own to someone else's strength. No matter how strong the attack is, it will only harm its owner. Camilla understood that if this continued, Justice would lose in disgrace due to an amusing one-sided battle. Derek asked the guy why he didn't do anything. He questioned whether the number one hero, the pride of the Guardian team, was standing in front of him. Lucas understood that if this continued, then everyone might suspect something and he was in vain to turn off his brain, relying on his feelings. If he had simply followed Camilla's instructions, he would have easily received two billion one and would not have ended up in this situation. The man asks how long he plans to be a punching bag. However, he could not bear to see the false hero behaving in a completely unheroic manner. At the moment of the collision, Lucas had an idea on how to defeat Derek. The man finally saw Justice start to fight, and told him that if he tried, they might have a draw. But suddenly he saw Justice approaching him. Lucas understood that he was no match for the real Justice. But still, in any situation there is a way out and here too there was a way to win. And this method was to direct such a flow of magic that Derek would not be able to absorb. The arena began to collapse from the sudden surge of enormous power from the two men. A very strong shock wave arose, which covered all the spectators. Camilla was surprised that the guy was starting to succeed. But if everything is left as is, then the atrium would disintegrate into atoms. Suddenly the men felt strong pressure from outside. They stopped fighting and were pulled towards the ground. Lucas didn't understand why his body suddenly felt so heavy. The man who intervened was Arthur. He told them to stop and look around. Lucas knew this guy. He was from the Union team. Arthur sighed and cancelled his ability, telling them to stop being childish and not do things like that again in places like this. Derek walked back to his seat with dissatisfaction. Jack bowed to Justice and thanked him for saving him. People were surprised by the fight and everyone admired Justice. They said that if he had not been stopped, Derek would have suffered greatly. Lucas breathed a sigh of relief and was glad that everything worked out. The next day at Justice's penthouse, Helen brought a list of heroes who had joined the four teams. Camille says that thanks to Lucas's antics, the situation in the atrium has become better, but Guardian is still in last place in terms of the number of new students. The guy asks if there is really such a big difference between the teams. Helen replies that not really and even though their hero lost, it didn't really matter. Because in the current situation, when the villains have been significantly weakened, 
there is still no one who would consciously want to join the Guardian. And at this rate, all power will be concentrated in the hands of the already famous superhuman team. Lucas asks what the problem is if they have a lot of powers. Camille reminds him that although they have great power, they behave no better than villains. Then the guy thoughtfully asks why don't they create their own alliance. The girl says that there is no one to even join the alliance, since El Condor is too radical. The superhumans are immediately excluded and only the Union team remains. Drawing a conclusion, there was an option to invite only them if they themselves would not be the initiators. Lucas asks the girls what's so difficult about this. He adds that it might be difficult to transform into two people at once. The girls don't understand what he's getting at. The next moment he shows them the phone and says that he will do it, but only for the salary of the number one hero. In the evening there was a party on the roof of the hotel with a lot of people. People were relaxing and having fun, some were swimming and some were dancing. Lucas asks why they came to such a place late at night. She replies that William, who was ranked third among Team Union members, is here. Unlike other teams in the Union team, rank does not depend on the strength of the hero, but on his popularity. Although he can hardly be called a hero, he has many connections thanks to the parties he throws. And today there should be a vote in which William will take part, and Lucas needs to falsify its result. Camilla doubts that the guy will succeed and asks what he plans to do. The guy says that this is not one of those things that is worthy of praise. And looking at the girl in a swimsuit, one idea already came to him. Finally William showed up at the party, and everyone was happy to see him. William turns to the people and says that today is a great party. And he also reminded them that there is no law that would oblige them to do the routine of saving people every day. He invites you to forget about all your worries and have fun until the morning. Thomas says that William has enough alcohol for today, to which he replies that he hasn't even started. Looking at the man, he asks why he dressed like that. The guy replies that it is appropriate for him to dress like that because he is his servant. William says that this is just a waste of a beautiful face and complains that such a boring guy was assigned to him. Suddenly a girl bumps into him and pours a drink on his clothes. William gets angry because his clothes were expensive and tells the girl to watch her step. Leslie says she didn't notice the guy because she drank too much. She offers to help him clean his clothes to which William replies that it's no big deal and it happens, to which the girl does not agree and says that she would really like to clean this stain in a secluded place. The guy says that since she really wants it, nothing can be done. He leaves Thomas and tells him to keep order in his absence. The guy enters the password and the door to his luxury room opens. But before William had time to ask anything, Leslie used her ability and the next moment she knocked him out with one blow. Naturally, it was Lucas who turned into a girl to deceive William. Immediately the guy began looking for the tablet on which the conference was supposed to take place. After finding it, the tablet had retina and fingerprint recognition. Although you couldn't tell from William, he was quite careful. But he was lucky that there was no password, so he transformed into William and easily unlocked the tablet. Arthur was surprised that William showed up to the conference so early. The man immediately got to the point and reminded that at this meeting they must decide whether to cooperate with the Guardian team. Everything will be decided by everyone's vote. Arthur had 1,479 votes. Beatrice had 1,326 and William had 985. Lucas was surprised by how everything was organized in the Union team. It was not like a vote, but like an entertainment show. The guy understood that William's voice could influence the result. Everyone quickly voted, and Arthur was a little surprised. Afterwards he said that since they had unanimously made a decision, they would act in accordance with it. Lucas logged out of the conference and breathed a sigh of relief. Camilla was waiting for him outside and she asked how it went, to which the guy replies that this is a success, and he has done work worth two billion. In his room, William woke up and agreed that he had had a little too much to drink. Thomas asks if the man really doesn't remember anything. William says that this is true, since intimacy with such a beauty must have been incredible, and he even managed to take part in the conference. He says that as soon as he opened the tablet, he noticed that he had already cast his vote. William wonders who the girl was and if Thomas has her contact. Thomas has guessed something and asks William for a list of all the guests present yesterday. The next morning... Lucas decided to completely review his wardrobe, as he needed to fully match Justice's style and preferences. Looking into the closet, he saw the complete opposite. All his things did not fit. Camilla added that it is necessary to change not only appearance, but also all habits, manner of communication, and behavior. Helen looked at all this with a dissatisfied expression on her face. 
It seems she still doesn't like this idea of a substitution. Lucas, throwing out all the things from the closet, remembered that now he has become incredibly rich and can buy anything. Suddenly he notices a photo in a frame. Having picked up the photo, the main character suddenly changes his face, falls to his knees and carefully examines everything that is depicted on it. The photograph shows his entire happy and carefree family resting at that moment. I remember they had just left the cinema. Lucas completely forgot that he hid it in the closet in order to remember less what happened that day. Longing for his family is visible in his eyes. Thinking about how wonderful it would be if his little sister saw him transform into justice, she would be delighted. Just thinking that you must take the photograph with you, the frame breaks and it flies straight under the bed. Dissatisfied with his clumsiness, Lucas tries to lift the bed and, not calculating his new enormous strength, throws the bed like a feather. There is a look of fear and surprise on his face at how he managed to pull this off. A little later, in the office, the main character and Camilla discuss what happened at home. Lucas says that the surge of strength began abruptly this morning and he excitedly says that he doesn't know what's happening to him, taking the pen and breaking it as soon as he touched it. Camille suggests that he somehow became more sensitive to Justice's abilities and his superpower began to awaken. With a stupid expression on his face, Lucas asks how this is possible, since he can only copy his appearance and gain a little power from it. Then his interlocutor began to explain that, like human muscles, the more often he uses his superpowers, the stronger he will become. And now it's time to get to work. In the blink of an eye, the main character turns into justice. It's time for a conference in which the main superheroes participate. Arthur apologizes for forcing everyone to get together and get in touch so suddenly. The fact is that he urgently needs to go on a business trip. Norman, wanting to quickly get to the point, mockingly says that now they have only one main topic on the agenda. This is a more productive distribution of our forces. The head of the team says that everything was correctly noted. The conversation will be about this. El Condor decided to establish an alliance with the Guardian team. Hearing his statement, Norman angrily becomes indignant at why everything was suddenly decided so quickly and how they came to this. As if not noticing his attacks, Arthur continues, All decisions depend on the results of the vote and, as it turned out, the majority believes that now more than ever it is necessary to concentrate on capturing the remaining villains. Norman, getting even more angry, says that this is all nonsense, and he doesn't like this idea. Suddenly Sigmund, squeezing the bandit's head, asks why he should concentrate on catching the villains in words. He sharply began to express his dissatisfaction, whether there were any good reasons for this. Jumping at this question, Norman replies that as a result of the last mission, the main base of the villains was destroyed. Then Justice says to stop arguing. This is a waste of time. His thoughts regarding this situation are completely different. And clearing the main camp does not provide any guarantee of complete deliverance from the enemy. Helen, in complete calm, adds that she completely agrees and agrees with the opinion of the head. With the same displeasure on his face, Norman wants to object. But his objections are immediately stopped by Derek. And in a languid voice he says that the decision was unanimous. How can one object to the opinion of the entire team? The complete destruction of the villains will bring peace and tranquility. This time he supports Guardian's intentions. Surprised by himself, Lucas in the body of justice thinks about how everything came to this skirmish between the heroes. The end of the negotiations is approaching. Returning to Lucas's rented apartment, Camille looks in surprise at the hole in the ceiling that appeared after an unsuccessful prank. She asks how he will justify himself to the landlady and whether he has any thoughts on this matter. While throwing out the trash, the main character replies that he will just give her a wad of money, thinking that this will solve the problem. But the important thing is that from the day he first approached him, some unknown shit began to happen to him. Supplementing, he asks why Camilla is helping him figure all this out. They have a normal market relationship. He works in exchange for money. Why is she worried about him? In response, Camilla says that it is in her interest that everything be in order. Because as long as justice is alive, all the heroes will behave as they should in reality. But there is another reason. This reason is a little personal. Realizing that she said too much, she hurriedly puts on her hood and moves towards the exit. Thinking that he had said something unnecessary, Lucas frowned, but did not find out what she meant, and it was better for him not to ask about it in the near future. Going out onto the terrace, 
They notice with caution that the same guard who was at the party with William is standing there. Camilla recognizes him and says that this is Thomas from the Union team, perplexed that he forgot here. Smiling as if nothing had happened, Thomas notes how unexpected it is to cross paths with them in such a place. Camilla reasons that he clearly came for a reason and why she is here. Turning sharply and staring at Lucas, Thomas suddenly declares that he knows about his copying abilities. Lucas freezes in fear. Trying to defuse the situation, he remarks with a smile on his face that this is a rather amusing ability, and he likes it. Then in an instant the smile on his face disappears, and he asks why he came to the party yesterday. He wasn't invited. Sensing something was wrong, Lucas shyly refuses and says that he doesn't understand what they're talking about. Yesterday he spent the whole evening doing household chores. Interrupting the blatant lie, Thomas claims that it will not be possible to evade the answer, since all the surveillance cameras have been viewed and indicate the opposite. One of the cameras clearly shows that he has reincarnated as a girl, after which he did everything that was planned, returned to his previous appearance, and calmly left the hotel. Then Lucas realized that he had missed one camera and began to declare that everything was not as he thought. He just got drunk and accidentally stumbled upon William and he began to seduce him. Assuming that this was just an incredible coincidence, Thomas said, it means I was just being paranoid. Suddenly his face became terrifying, and he asked rhetorically how Lucas would explain his transformation into justice. Both froze from fear and fear of being declassified and Thomas continued, he cannot be sure, but there is an assumption. Before he can finish speaking, his hand pulls out a tooth with lightning speed, blood pours out of his mouth, but there is not a drop of pain on his face. I don't understand what's happening. Jumping back, no one understands what's happening, why all this is happening. Then their guest, without losing the advantage, with a slight movement of his fingers, launches his tooth with furious force. Flying over them, it turns into a huge dome. Everyone stands in a stupor from fear and cannot do anything. The next moment the dome covers Camille, which frightens the main character, he is confused. At this moment, a bone resembling a sharp blade appears from Thomas's hands and he demands to return to the conversation. He is ready to achieve the truth, even at the cost of his life. Not understanding the essence of what is happening, Lucas questioningly shouts for him to stop and why he needs it. Examining his hand, from which a bone blade is visible, Thomas calmly says that, as mentioned earlier, he wants to check something. Recently, he began to notice significant changes in Justice's behavior even considering the assassination attempt that everyone was told about. A comparison of facts gives two unobvious results. He suggests that maybe Camille, Justice S. favorite student, has among her acquaintances a person who knows how to copy someone else's appearance, and this person is now standing in front of him. Having just finished speaking, Thomas rushes at Lucas with incredible speed and casually wounds his neck with his weapon. The wound is not deep, but still causes discomfort. This action replaces fear with anger and determination. Then, with rage in his eyes, the main character screams in bewilderment why the heroes, even in such a situation, cannot avoid disunity. In response to this, Thomas says that even a child with primitive thinking could expose his evil intentions, and he is waiting for an explanation. Lucas's eyes filled with anger, sparks appeared around his body. Lightning began to flow from his hands and he said that he was tired of all this. Seeing the very abilities of justice, Thomas did not understand how he succeeded. Apparently he did not foresee this and did not think that everything had gone so far. Then he decides to achieve the truth in a different way. The same blade appears from the second hand, and an ominous atmosphere reigns around. Then the thought appears in Lucas's head that if he tells the truth, he will lose all his money. And what's even worse, Perhaps it was this scoundrel with blades who killed Justice. But this no longer mattered. The fist began to fill with strength that was difficult even to restrain. He rushes at his opponent, but with a sharp and precise movement he throws Lucas' hand away and redirects the powerful blow to the side. He also noted that he does not know how to control such enormous power. But it's a pity that if he had the power of Justice, he would have controlled it much better. Smiling, the main character says that he sees the frustration on his face and that he is probably very upset that he does not have such power. In response to this, Thomas furiously declares that he is too irresponsible about everything and disposes of her only to satisfy his desires, after which he rushes forward. Having almost pierced the protagonist's skull with a quick lunge, Thomas puts him on his shoulder blades, 
but Lucas manages to stop the blade at the last moment. The forces are clearly not equal. A little more and everything will end in tears. In an instant, Lucas throws his opponent aside and grabs him tightly by the arms, not allowing him to even move. Thomas suddenly notices and says that he seems to be fighting at full strength, but still cannot wake up. Not understanding what he is interpreting, the guy thinks about what it means to awaken and why it was said. He does not know that thanks to awakening, he can improve his performance and become much stronger, but the hero's strength increases based on his most sincere motives. Only there he can shine brighter than others. Thomas, gritting his teeth, yells that it's obvious how mediocrely he wastes the gifted power. Without even knowing about the awakening, there is still a lot of misunderstanding in Lucas's eyes. Looking straight into the eyes, Thomas continues, Is it really true that holding the opponent's hands, in the boy's opinion, will be enough to win, after which he says that he can distribute force to any part of his body. At this moment huge tusks emerge from his elbows, which Lucas miraculously dodges, after which he rushes with all his might at the offender, because he remembers that Camilla is still in this cocoon and no one knows what's wrong with her. Everything needs to be resolved as quickly as possible. Out of surprise, Thomas does not understand what is happening, loses his mind for a second and comes to his senses again. At that moment he receives a blow. From the uncalculated force of the blow, Lucas' knee seems to be covered in fire, and he writhes in pain. Then the question follows, in which part of the body does a person have the strongest bone? But Lucas doesn't seem to hear him, standing on one knee and bursting with pain. Then Thomas himself, answering his own question, says that the answer is outrageously simple. In the skull, his face is covered with a bone mask. He irritates Lucas terribly but he admits he is right and his forgetfulness. Well, this will be remembered forever. Despite all this, Thomas understands and thinks to himself that during the entire fight he could not land a single blow. What is hidden in this boy? Having risen, the main character pulls himself together, takes a deep breath and decides to put an end to this confrontation. Before, he was only concerned about conspiracy. He wanted to quickly finish everything that he was dragged into. However, from the moment he was unable to save his family, Lucas constantly hated himself for not being strong enough to protect the people he loved. Thinking about this, the boy does not notice how the enemy got close to him and said that he could not even scratch him and it was time to surrender. Thomas was right, even with the power of justice, which still needed to be mastered, there was still little chance, but despite this there was still hope. Charging his fist to full power, everything around him pale in comparison with this power, Lucas strikes. The blow flies past Thomas and he, pointing his blade at the back of his opponent's head, exclaims with mockery that he warned them that their strengths were incomparable. Turning around, with fire in his eyes and a wide smile, the guy reports that he was not aiming at him at all. A broken coken can be seen behind him. Camilla is freed. In a matter of seconds, Thomas's entire body is enveloped by shadow tentacles, immobilizing him not giving him a chance to come to his senses. Camilla thanks for the release and is going to ask the ill-wisher a couple of questions, but before that she is going to beat the crap out of him. It seems that he cannot free himself. Now he can only wait for his fate. Imprisonment in a bone cocoon has madly angered the mistress of the shadows. The madness in her eyes is terrifying. Thomas seems at a loss and doesn't know what to expect next. The shadows squeeze his body more and more. But the whole situation suddenly turns upside down, and a bone suddenly appears from the forearm, which easily cuts the shackles. The intruder says that he already mentioned how his abilities work. Bones can appear from any part of his body, even if he himself is immobilized. Without thinking twice, Camille releases a stream of several shadows to prevent the enemy from being released. But he suddenly puts a block from a pile of bone tissue and easily cuts all the obstacles in his way. It seems unstoppable. Breaking the sharpest blade from his body, Thomas launches it, hoping to wound or at least confuse his attacker. The blade almost hits Camilla right in the head, easily digging into the wall. She is not discouraged. It seems that a little more and everything would have ended fatally. Taking advantage of the confusion and distraction of his opponent, Thomas strikes the next blow. It seems that this swing will definitely hit the target. It turns out that everything is not so simple. Being in amazing shape and having a quick reaction, Camille, using a shadow portal, ends up behind the enemy. Watching this mind-blowing fight, Lucas stands with his eyes bulging. The level of the fighters in this battle is quite high. This guy is fighting on par with Justice's own student. Having assessed the situation, 
Thomas understands that his opponent is quickly closing the distance and attacking with shadows from a safe distance, then he can do the same. Having pulled out another tooth, with a sharp movement, imperceptible to the common man, as if a live cartridge were being torn out of his hands, a bone projectile was being torn out. This time it is divided in two and several traps are already flying from above. It will not be easy to dodge such a trap, saying that he won't be able to pull off the same sneaky trick twice. Camilla sharpens her day and cuts off the enemy's attack. At this moment, she notices that Thomas has disappeared from sight. Where did he go in such a short period of time? As students' gaze darts from side to side, trying to find the intruder, attempts are in vain. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a threat appears from above, but the shadows can predict the enemy's movements and instinctively protect their mistress. She jumps back quickly and fires dark purple streaks at Thomas's landing spot. Perhaps this is the end. Despite the accurate hit, he manages to precisely build a bone shield on his chest, which easily repels the attack. Crouching, collecting all the shadows in the area, which sent tremors throughout the building, Camilla says that he managed to make her fight seriously. With a sharp movement of both hands, a clot of ominous energy rises up, obeying the movements of the mistress. Her gaze has become even more terrifying. Huge shadows appear over Thomas's head in the form of a mouth of waves. Terrifying. This is one of the strongest abilities, called a shadow tsunami. If it collapses on him, it will be hard. This entire incredible clot of energy covers a huge area of the building. A little more and everything will collapse. The ability slightly hurts the enemy, but he is miraculously saved thanks to the bone armor. And at the same moment he appears behind Camilla. With the last of his strength Thomas concentrates all his strength in his hand, trying to deliver the final blow. Lucas, rushing to help, fearing for his mentor, tries to warn her, shouting her name. Just before the end of the attack, Justice's student, with a carefree expression on her face, reports a shadow behind her that will pierce Thomas at any moment. After this news, he freezes. In a commanding tone, Camille says that the time has come to stop. It is clearly clear that from the very beginning the stranger was not trying to kill anyone. Lucas can't understand what's going on here at all, because the enemy almost killed them a couple of times. In fact, it would not have been difficult for Thomas to deprive them of the ability to breathe with just one touch. But this did not happen, what goals he actually pursues. Confirming everything that has been said, the guy says that, given the circumstances, the case of killing justice, which was mentioned at the meeting, was not at all unsuccessful. Justice is really dead. Taking out a flash card from his pocket, he claims that there is footage of Lucas' transformation into the leader of all heroes. He will have many difficulties with this material. If this is revealed, then everyone will consider the copy hero a murderer, and then he will immediately come to an end. Having finished the phrase, Thomas breaks the flash drive with a snap of his fingers. In amazement, Lucas does not understand why he did this, unless his goal is blackmail. Then the guy with a charming smile declares that he has no reason to oppose them. Their interests are similar, although everything looks different. Camille questions what he means, to which Thomas replies that although he was formerly a member of Team Union, he is now a spy for Team El Condor. From this news, Lucas and Camilla freeze in place, unable to utter a word. Then Thomas continues, saying that at the moment Guardian and El Condor are much inferior in strength to the superhuman team. As soon as the epidemic of villains faded into the background, everyone began to care only about their own interests, to earn more and become richer. Therefore, Thomas was given the task of infiltrating Union and causing chaos within the team, but he also needs allies with whose help he can carry out his job smoothly. Lucas seems to begin to understand the whole essence of the matter and then tries to make sure what exactly he means. Then the new guest says that everything is right, the three of them will join Union, and organize a judgment day there. Camilla still didn't trust Thomas, and asked how they knew that the data on the flash drive was in a single version, and perhaps there was a copy somewhere. In response to this, he replies that he really likes Lucas's skills, they can be applied in many places. But regarding distrust, he will not persuade them, and if they do not agree, they will become competitors and will definitely lose. Justice's student and replacement didn't know how to respond. Then, angry, Lucas objected that it was inappropriate to say this now, even though he was simply playing the role of justice. The main goal remains to find those who killed him. Having entered into an alliance, Thomas will have to help them in this matter. The guy with silver hair replied that he understood everything perfectly and agreed. 
because then he might have a chance to personally kill the vile killer Justice, and that sounds cool. The main character then thought that if Thomas was on the El Condor team, he madly hated the villains and this could mean that he would be quite suitable for them as an ally. Tired of waiting for an answer, he forces him to quickly decide whether they are for him or against him. Camilla and Lucas looked at each other. It seems that the girl likes the mood of her comrade in arms and leaves the right to make a decision to him. But first you need to hear what Thomas has in mind. The guest, looking at the coordinated work of this couple when choosing a solution, simply looks at them with a smile. They seem to agree. A little later, a guard at the Union team's combat headquarters carefully examines the protagonist's ID, pronouncing his name and comparing the photo on the document and in life. Seeing that the situation is tense, Lucas says that he is a newbie and just recently joined the team, then they let him through. Exhaling with relief, he remembers that he had been sitting on the certificate all night, his hand was very tired from painstaking work, he had to try. Definitely, the feeling of the heroes in the Union team is different from the Guardian. Everyone is so relaxed, there is no distinctive dress code, since at their core they only pursue their own goals. Seeing a familiar figure, Lucas seems to freeze, unable to look away. Camilla appears in front of him in a non-standard outfit for herself. She is wearing a fitted blouse and jeans, and besides, the hood that constantly covers her face has disappeared. She uttered only one phrase, having found out why he was staring so much. Then the main character answers too directly that it's just now possible to say for sure that Camilla is charming. Angry and a little embarrassed, she shouts that she doesn't even want to hear such phrases anymore. In fact, she is unusual in receiving compliments, since she is usually in a completely covered outfit. Pushing Lucas with her shoulder, the enraged student of justice quickly walked forward, calling her partner. But before that he gritted his teeth and did not say too much. Ahead of them, some popular personality was taking pictures with fans with a happy expression on his face. Lucas recognized her and said that it was Evie, having heard that she also debuted as a hero and immediately decided to become a newcomer to the Union team. Evie was a popular food blogger, very popular. Her live broadcasts attract 100,000 viewers. Camilla assumes that most of the heroes who join the Union team do so for commercial purposes. Most likely she is here only to get a good PR. Interrupting the conversation, the always smiling Thomas calls out to them, waves his hand and is glad that they have finally met. Looking at him, Camille claims that the plan actually doesn't look that bad, even though it was the weird smiling guy who came up with it. By quickly raising your popularity in the Union team, you can exercise your right to vote, either career nor abilities are important, it all depends on how much the hero attracts public attention. Lucas asks his partner whether she won't arouse suspicion, having only yesterday been part of the Guardian team, even despite this, how she can gain popularity in Union. Having overheard the conversation and coming closer, Thomas confidently declares that there is a way and will soon tell about it. A little later, our heroes find themselves at a lecture about abilities, the teacher says that any ability is based on the so-called manifestation. Depending on the manifestation, the same ability can be used in different ways, that is, manifest differently, giving different abilities. Continuing the lecture, the teacher says that in rare cases it happens that the manifestation proceeds a little differently than expected. Usually this happens when the abilities are first awakened. And almost certainly all this will lead to the person losing control of himself, falling into a rage and not being aware of his actions, an example is shown in the photo. In this state, a person almost completely loses his mind and acquires threatening incredible strength, and his brain begins to function only on reflexes. Adding to what has been said, the teacher states that such people periodically become targets of the hero's hunts, and if anyone present is interested in such a hunt, they can receive a similar task. The vast majority of the educational audience did not understand who might be interested in this, because it is incredibly dangerous and not worth such effort. The teacher, as he thought, is not expected among the newcomers, although this is understandable. Because this is not the Guardian or El Condor team, he continues the lecture. But suddenly, quite unexpectedly, a shout is heard from the audience and Lucas's raised hand is visible. He says that their group wants to take part in this. Surprised, the teacher with an eye patch cannot remember the last time one of the new students agreed to this kind of task. Everyone around Lucas began to whisper and chuckle. The bravest ones even asked what was wrong with him, and whether his team agreed with this decision. Looking at Thomas, he found out if he had made a mistake. In response, the guy said that everything was fine. 
but it would be difficult for a beginner, but with the power of justice it would be no more difficult than defeating a child. Justice's monastery and favorite training room. The room looks quite spacious, even too spacious. At the entrance, the girl asks why he asked to bring him here, what he had in mind. Then Lucas's expression suddenly became serious. He remembered the battle with Kaisar and said that it was a matter of strength. In the battle with Kaisar everything worked out by itself, because Justice's powers are colossal. And in the confrontation with Derek in the arena, he would not have managed if the fight had not been interrupted. Continuing, he added that Helen was right. Until that moment he had only thought about profit and money. But now there is something more to his goals. A memory appeared in my head from his birthday. When the whole family was gathered, they were happy and carefree. That day, Lucas decided to please his little beloved sister, knowing that she desperately wanted to see a hero named Nolan. The girl really loved this hero very much and always followed his achievements. Her eyes were wide open, she impatiently waited for a miracle. A second later, the same hero Nolan appears before her eyes. Lucas specially trained for weeks so that everything would go perfectly. My sister was overwhelmed with joy and admiration. Her dream came true thanks to her brother, whom she loved madly. The wonderful moment is suddenly interrupted by a certain entity that appears behind. At one moment the table where the parents were sitting flies up into the air. It seems they died on the spot. The girl cried from fear and clung to her brother. Lucas himself was also scared and dumbfounded. Not understanding what was happening, he stared at the villain. A huge pile of purple muscles with four eyes and a twisted mouth looked at them and was glad that he had finally found a hero to compete with. Lucas had never seen villains so close. In that moment it was as if he was frozen to the ground and could not move. But the thought that there is a sister nearby who needs to be protected brings him to his senses. The guy instantly stands in front of her and covers her with his body. Deciding that he needs to pull himself together otherwise little Sona will die just like his parents. Lucas decisively rushes at the hero, hoping to win. But everything turned out differently. The enemy hits backhand with one slight movement of his paw, after which the boy flies off 10 meters and, it seems, is unable to even stand up. After hitting the tree hard, his transformation began to wear off and his real exhausted face was visible from under the mask. With the last of his strength, he told Sona to run, but it was too late. Before his eyes the monster grabbed the girl and squeezed with inhuman strength. The sound of bones crunching was clearly heard in the air. The next moment, Lucas saw that the monster's mouth opened wide and began to mercilessly devour the girl. The last thing the girl said was the word brother. It seems that this memory seriously angered the main character. His veins bulged, his arm became more powerful and became covered with tons of lightning. After which, with all his might, Justice's successor concentrated all his strength and literally demolished all the massive columns in the room with one blow. Seeing this, Camilla was incredibly surprised. Her eyes opened wide, she did not expect such power, because he did not even turn into Justice as if his powers were increasing with every second. Determined, Lucas confidently said that now he will train and in the future will do everything that depends on him. At this time, in one of the few remaining villains' bases, a guy was sitting and looking for something on the internet. He receives a call, putting the phone to his ear. From it he hears information that a couple of newcomers have joined the Union team and are moving on a mission to his area. Hearing this, the guy was happy and got up and headed to the door. In place of his footprints, some creepy, incomprehensible substance appeared in the form of dirt. Opening the door to the basement, he said that he and his guys were bored, they were hungry, and below they could see a bunch of evil eyes and the open mouths of strange creatures. On the other side of the street, our trio of heroes were going on a mission entrusted to them by the head of Team Union. With a mockery, seeing Lucas' uncertainty, Thomas wonders if they can cope. After all, this is not an easy task, after which, to reassure him, he adds that Justice's power is with them and there is nothing to worry about. Moreover, thanks to Camilla, they didn't even assign a hero mentor to them, and this actually says a lot. Then Lucas was indignant that the group should consist of four people, but there were only three of them. At that moment someone's hand touched his shoulder. With joy and good spirits, the charming blonde girl greets everyone and says that she was sent with them. Evie in surprise, she responds by saying that they are the same age and why not make friends. Then Camilla runs into Thomas in a rage and is indignant that he brought the streamer. What was he even thinking about? Then the guy answered, he said that popularity is important in the union team, 
It's convenient to have someone like Evie, she can speak on behalf of their group, especially considering the fact that they are forced to hide their identities. Surprised by what she heard, Evie asks with interest why they need to hide their identities. Lucas, not understanding what was happening, thought how he could talk about it so openly, they would be exposed. Showing her naivety, the fair-haired cutie says with admiration that they really also have a streamer in their lineup and she, too, felt awkward in public at first. Everyone seemed to be reassured by this ridiculous assumption, and Thomas said that the patrol area was quite large and they should split up into pairs. Lucas immediately suggested that he be with Camille, but Thomas, as the team captain, refused and ordered him to team up with Evie. Hearing this the guy's jaw dropped. Then Thomas took the main character aside and said that he had forgotten about what the professor said, he had never felt the manifestation before. The difference in abilities before and after was incomparable. Evie would help him with this. Looking at the carefree girl, Lucas thought how and what he should learn from her, because she is so carefree and hardly has much strength. In addition, Thomas added, if they still had suspicions and mistrust of him, then Camila would be able to personally observe him. Justice's student agrees and says that this is a good idea. That's what they will do. After which she and the bone guy headed forward, wished him good luck and ordered that if something happened to immediately contact them. There was an awkward pause between the guy and the girl, as if they didn't understand what to do and in which direction to move. Then Evie moved in the opposite direction. Lucas reluctantly followed her muttering dissatisfiedly under his breath that he was lucky to be walking around with a popular girl, noticing that she looked cuter than on the streams. Suddenly thinking that he doesn't even know what abilities this cutie has, Evie appears before his eyes and wonders what Thomas's words about watching him meant. This was said too straightforwardly. In response, Lucas replies that the guy just recently became a member of their group and that it was meant to monitor his progress. The girl believed in this without a second thought. Apparently she was very naive and, as if she had read the thoughts of the main character, began to talk about her abilities. She can eat as much food as she wants and after that acquires incredible strength. Stunned by this ability, Lucas thinks that this is some kind of absurd nonsense, and he doesn't believe it at all. Also, the cutie, taking out a chocolate bar and eating it, added that she wanted to become a hero in order to eat a lot for free and become more popular. Hearing this, Lucas had questions in his head. Thomas said that she would train him. Probably this bastard was just mocking him. Then Evie started saying some really weird things about how Lucas should just try to think about what he wants to do, and it doesn't have to be something big. Not understanding the essence of the question, the guy simply remained silent and thought that there must be some reason why this naive and sweet girl uses her abilities better than him. The next moment, peeking around the corner, Evie motioned with her hand for him to slowly come up and look at it. Before their eyes stood a huge man who seemed to consist entirely of muscles of an incomprehensible kind. He was wearing practically no clothes, only tattered shorts. Realizing that this was most likely their goal, he had not noticed them yet, and they first needed to sneak up quietly. His thoughts were suddenly interrupted by the crunch of candy bars and slurping. Turning around, the main character saw that a sweet and little girl had attacked the food with a huge appetite and seemed to be swallowing it without chewing. Angry, he wondered what was going on here and whether this strange streamer had enough gray matter in her brain. Approaching, Lucas grabbed her hands and ordered her to stop eating now, especially since the enemy was very close. Evie, not understanding anything, asked why he was angry. The guy's raised tone was heard by this creature, which turned out to be not a human at all but some kind of monster, and then for some reason rushed at the couple. The girl, seeing the enemy behind her, shouted loudly that after eating she could kick ass and her body began to be covered with some kind of energy, after which she broke the monster's head with one strong and biting kick. Now she doesn't seem like a nice girl at all. From such a lightning strike, the villain flew into the wall with incredible speed, breaking it. Then the glory that the girl said ten minutes ago appeared in Lucas's head, that Evie could eat as much as she wanted and become stronger from it. So she really has such an ability, she burns calories, acquiring superpowers, the glow around her body appears precisely because of this. But it is unclear how the monster restored its body and rushed to attack. A strong blow lands right on the body of the seemingly fragile girl. Fearing that she might die, Lucas shouts her name and rushes to help. But his worries turn out to be unfounded, thanks to instincts and a full stomach, the girl manages to put a block and, after taking a strong blow, does not even move. Calculating how many calories she spent, 
she realizes that she still has strength and concentrates a huge clot of energy in her left hand, after which she quickly hits the monster, feeling incredible pain after an accurate hit in the chest. It is unclear how he even survived. Unable to win, the villain decides to run away. Rejoicing at the enemy's retreat, Evie says that she will follow him so as not to give him a chance to survive, and let Lucas contact the rest of the group and inform them about this. Left alone, taking the phone out of his pocket, the main character, shocked by what he saw, realizes that something incredible has happened before his eyes. Suddenly, some clot of dirt snatches the phone from his hands. Seeing this, the guy tries to grab it, but does not come out. Behind him, some strange guy, whom we saw earlier in the office, seems to materialize out of this mud and asks if the main character is really planning to contact his friends, but he won't succeed. Seeing this picture in front of him, thinking that no one warned that there would be someone else here, Lucas understands that this strange guy thinks differently than the previous monster. But the main goal now is to contact the team, and he rushes to take the phone, but his blow passes through the enemy's body, as if he had hit a mud ball. Lucas doesn't understand what the hell is going on here. All that's left of that attacker are puddles of dirt around. Taking advantage of the protagonist's loss of vigilance, the mud villain stabs his body with a knife. Quickly flowing like a clot of dirt, he appears in front of the guy and with a terrifying smile, as if a crazy person says that he won't be able to take the phone. Angry after these words, Lucas delivers a quick blow to the enemy's head, this time there was a feeling of a blow, but it was somehow strange. It seems that the enemy did not even feel him, but only stood and wondered where that beauty had gone, so he was not at all interested. Unable to bear the fact that he seemed to be ignored, Lucas began to ask about what the enemy had to do with the monster that had appeared here earlier. In response, he only said that who knows, who knows, now he is interested in something else, whether that sweet girl is helping him with manifestation. Not everyone is able to withstand their manifestation. The villain takes advantage of this, turning them into his puppets. The terrifying expression on this psycho's face is terrifying. Apparently he is determined to make a new doll out of the main character. Covered in lightning with anger, Lucas says that if they became such monsters because of this guy, then he will answer for everything he has done. Dirt appeared on the enemy's body, and he said with confidence that then let him try, after which both rushed at each other. The powerful blow of Justice's successor once again fell on a clot of mud. The enemy seems to be able to transform any part of his body into mud without receiving damage at all. But this time it was as if this incomprehensible mixture began to bind his hand, a little more, and he would not even be able to move it. The next second, the opponent collected a bunch of dirt in his mouth and, like a machine gun, began to shoot it at Lucas. As soon as he dodged, the guy felt a sharp pain in his hand. The dirt squeezed his hand like a vice, trying to remove it. Nothing happened. Seeing these attempts, the psycho said that there was no way to remove his dirt. As soon as it stuck, it became stronger than medical plaster. Although it may not be that strong, who the hell cares, his throat became huge and ugly, after which he fired another burst of mud bullets. This time it was not possible to dodge a couple of projectiles. Now the other hand is shackled. It is becoming more and more difficult to move. It seems that soon he will collect all his dirt and lose. Then the main character decides that in order to win he needs to shorten the distance as soon as possible and go into close combat, after which he rushes at the enemy, smiling. The enemy says that this is a good idea, but he will not be able to win since he has already collected a lot of dirt and his movements have become slow. As if not hearing the provocations, Lucas concentrates all his strength in his hand it suddenly frees itself from the shackles of dirt, and one can feel the incredible energy emanating from the guy. The enemy seems to have been caught by surprise, his eyes looking in surprise at the approaching fist. Really hit it, thought the main character, but the hand again flies through the body of the strange enemy. There is still a smile on the terrifying face, he even stuck out his tongue and said that it hurt, but that was not enough. Lucas's hand seemed to be stuck in a hardened wall, he couldn't free it, it was a special trap of the enemy, after which he shouted that he was not so frail and began to beat the main character with many quick blows. Having almost lost consciousness, Lucas felt a sudden surge of strength and, in a rage, launched a powerful blow towards the enemy, almost putting an end to the confrontation. Suddenly, a huge titan consisting of a pile of muscles appeared in front of the mud psycho, 
Its ferocious mouth let out a deafening scream and rushed forward headlong. The guy was distracted and received a powerful blow, which made him fly several tens of meters. A timely block saved his life. Looking forward, he thought that this monster had also been a human before. How vilely this crazy person was acting. Without showing weakness, with a smile, the villain realized that the guy was strong and the last blow almost killed him. The pain inside seemed to be tearing him apart. Having collected himself, the psycho said that the fight was kind of boring. There were a huge number of similar ones in his memory, and Lucas would be next. Angered by these words, the main character realized that this monster had killed many people, deprived them of their minds and made them his army. At that moment, another turquoise-colored creature appeared behind the psycho. It looked much uglier than the previous ones, probably because of the time spent in this guise. But this is not the end. Looking back, there were two more of the same converted monsters standing there. Then the villain said, slowly moving away from Lucas, that he was tired of messing around here and he would go to that beauty. It would be more fun with her, and now his charges would deal with him. As if having heard an order, the collars on the monsters began to tear. It seemed that they were holding back their real monstrous power as the enemies seemed to have transformed and become more powerful. At the same moment, an incredibly powerful attack hits Lucas, he miraculously manages to jump away, and the monstrous force of the blow creates a crater in the asphalt. Being completely at a loss, because there are four huge big men against him, the main character is looking for ways to emerge victorious from such a difficult situation. Two monsters fly at him at once, it seems that a little more, and they will simply crush the hero. Dodging this attack, he receives a hard blow to the back. The blow seems to pierce him through and Lucas falls to the ground. Subsequently, now all four attackers literally beat him, hitting every centimeter of his body. It seems that all his insides will soon begin to bleed. But despite this, incredible power seems to awaken Injustice's successor. Complete indifference is red in his eyes. The feeling of pain has left him. Charging one incredible attack after another, the fists absorb more and more energy imbuing the wielder with monstrous strength. Having surrounded the main character, the villains try to attack at once and take him by surprise, but he fights off all attacks and even strikes back. The next moment, two big guys with their joint efforts throw Lucas several meters back, but it seems this only angers him even more and despite his almost depleted energy reserves, electric spark discharges cover the hero's body. With incredible speed, he jumps on one of the opponents and slams him into the ground, not even giving him a chance to take defensive action. The monsters seem to be starting to feel tired, loud wheezing sounds coming from their mouths, huddled together, preparing for the next attack. Suddenly one of them releases its tongue, which easily breaks through the wall behind the main character. Not expecting that they are capable of such a thing, Justice's successor, fortunately, manages to deflect the body, almost falling. Following him, the turquoise titanium quickly jumps forward with its legs, Waving its muscular arms, it hits the hero. But Lucas manages to block the blow. But even so it causes significant damage, which slams him into the wall, his strength almost running out. Breathing heavily from a grueling fight, he does not understand how to rally and defeat four crazed opponents at once. Before that, he tried to restrain his strength, because he understood that inside these monsters there were ordinary people. At this time, Cutie Evie caught up and defeated the very first monster, his lifeless body lies on the asphalt, showing no signs of life. Satisfied with herself and noticeably hungry, the girl stretches her muscles, thinking how nice it would be to film all this and show it to her viewers. Standing over her stricken opponent, she notices someone's silhouette in the distance, which is rapidly approaching. It is unclear who it is. The same psycho who set his horde of monsters on Lucas suddenly clearly appears in front of her. He praises Evie saying that she did a good job. Asking how she dealt with such a thug alone, he adds that he is also a new hero, ingratiating himself with her. Continuing to praise his interlocutor, the villain says that the cutie did all the dirty work for him and in fact he was tracking down this monster. Remembering Lucas, the girl asks if he has seen a guy with dark hair, who should have reunited with the rest of the group long ago and been here. Looking from under his brows at his stricken puppet, the psycho replies that he saw some guy shouting that he had to say something to his team and disappearing from sight. Examining the cutie, he doesn't understand at all how she managed to defeat one of his strongest charges, thinking that he overestimated him. Then the girl suspiciously asks what team this unfamiliar person belongs to. 
judging by the clothes, this is not guardian or superhumans. Then, with a wide smile, trying to inspire confidence, the strange guy answers that he is new to the union team. Having interrupted his speech, Evie says that this is not true, since she has a very good memory for faces and she did not see him at the general gathering of all newcomers, at which time the psycho appears behind her and tries to attack. Thanks to her incredible instincts, the cutie, quickly turning around with a lightning strike, literally splits the stranger's hand. Not at all expecting such a turn of events, having even forgotten what he wanted to do, he bulges his eyes, and a huge hole appears in the place of his hand. Evie calmly says, looking at the unfamiliar guy, that touching girls without permission is a bad thing, even for the most avid fan. His hand flew off two miles away from a strong blow, slammed into the wall, and slowly flowed down. Saying that this guy is somehow suspicious, she just wanted to digest the bars and relax. The girl becomes covered in a multicolored glow. Returning to the main character, who at this time, without slowing down at all, repeatedly knocks out enemies, but they quickly recover and continue to attack. One of them is in a wild rage. From the injuries he received, steam is escaping from his eyes and mouth. He seems to be serious. Suddenly, the largest of the converts grabs Lucas by both hands at once, with such force that he is unable to even move his fingers. Seeing that despite all the efforts, the people inside these monsters still do not awaken, the main character decides that it is not people who are fighting him now, and a smile appears on his face. It's as if a bolt of lightning falls on the guy, and he is completely covered with thick luminous energy, which only when it appears throws the attackers back a couple of meters. With one hand, Lucas, fighting at full power, literally flattens the arm of one of his opponents, grabs him and lifts him above him. In pain, even such a seemingly insensitive monster screams, unable to resist such a huge inhuman force. With one sharp throw, the main character sends the monster flying with all his might, which on the way bumps into another attacker, and they both fly into the wall. It seems their battle is over. Memories suddenly flash through Lucas's head, in which he asks Camilla if it was possible to bring the person who had turned back to their senses, to which Thomas confidently replied that now they are just monsters and not a single case is known for certain when the Madden could become human again they should be killed without hesitation. Having accepted all these words, standing surrounded by the two remaining monsters, the main character says that he is very sorry that they were turned into dolls and he will finish with them as quickly as possible. At this time, Evie, before attacking, asks the suspicious stranger if he really saw her team member and if everything is okay with him. Responding to this, the psycho says that he doesn't know, maybe the monsters are already digesting him. According to him, the cutie in front of him is not so weak. Her abilities are simply amazing and she should agree to cooperate. Angry upon hearing these words, the girl replies, Ban, this is definitely a ban. It's a pity that such a function doesn't exist in real life. She wouldn't have to listen to all this nonsense. Disappointed, the villain turns into a mud monster and flies into the air and says that he will enjoy tormenting her even more. Without thinking twice, the heroine delivers a series of blows, but it seems she misses as the dirt simply scatters to the sides from her attacks. Circling around at breakneck speed, the enemy creature envelopes the girl, trying to immobilize her. Then Evie, concentrating all her strength in her legs, crouches for a moment and prepares to jump to get out of this mud trap, after which he jumps so high that he seems to be higher than the five-story buildings around him. Seeing that the opponent is trying to increase the fighting distance, the villain begins to attack her with his mud projectiles fired from his mouth. In fact, the girl avoided falling into the trap and, moreover, in the air began to replenish her strength by eating candy bars, hidden for a special occasion. Having quickly finished eating over her head, the girl forms a huge ball of charming and at the same time destructive energy. She unleashes this entire huge clot of incredible power on the enemy, seemingly without giving him a chance to dodge. Having miraculously survived, the mud stranger evaluates his opponent's attack and thinks that after such a release of energy, the girl should quickly run out of steam. But his conclusions are hasty, while simultaneously absorbing the bars and releasing balls of energy one by one, she literally exhausts the villain. Seeing that Evie is constantly eating and eating, this drives him crazy and he shouts for her to finish eating faster. After this, he raises a huge wall of dirt and brings it down on the heroine hoping to capture her. Evie makes a hole in the wall with a blow of her hand and breaks out, realizing that a little longer, 
and she will not be able to hold back all these endless streams. Not noticing the whole situation while defending herself, the girl finds herself in a puddle of mud, which envelopes her legs and completely immobilizes her. Noticing this, the villain uses his manifestation, which he calls a mud storm. With the help of his special ability, he completely pulls in from all sides and envelopes Evie's body. In this state it is even difficult for her to breathe. Having returned to his usual appearance, the psycho comes up and says that the girl looks cute even in this slop, so cute that he wanted to take her home. As soon as he began to stretch his vile hand towards the heroine, Lucas suddenly appears and with a slashing blow of enormous force almost disables the villain, angrily shouting that he should not dare touch his comrades. Such a non-entity like him is not worthy to even stand next to them. Seeing his previous opponent, the psycho said that he did not think of meeting again. And why did he come close if he had already lost to him? In response to this, the guy calmly said that while he was running here, he was considering a bunch of options on how to make a stake out of him. Meanwhile, at the hero training center, Helen couldn't get Lucas out of her head. He said that he had infiltrated Union, but there was no news after that. Seeing a cleaning robot near the entrance to the main training hall of the deceased justice, the girl asked what happened. In response, she heard that she would not be able to train here today since it seemed that Mr. Justice had used her a little earlier. Everything inside was destroyed. Entering the training room, the girl was surprised and angry at the same time, since she could only guess what Lucas was doing here. Meanwhile, on the streets of Tokyo, in response to Lucas's insolence, the strange guy replies that when someone gives him good advice, he should be thanked and taken seriously, and there is no point in fighting him. But as they say, if you don't try, you won't know. With this attitude, the main character gathers his strength and prepares for the attack. Just after laughing, the psycho again begins to take lumps of dirt into his throat and release them at him. Lucas is familiar with this attack. He is not at all surprised. He harmoniously digs his fingers into the asphalt, pulls it out and throws it in front of him, thereby protecting himself from projectiles. The villain says, praising him, that a good technique is better than just running away, as he did earlier. But how can he protect himself from this? Justice's successor, quickly rushing towards him, it seems that it is so huge that it can fill the entire street. With incredible speed, the villain seems to immediately deliver one blow after another from all sides, thereby covering the main character's body with layers of dirt until he is completely immobilized. With a nasty smile, the stranger mocks him by saying that he wanted to make a stake out of him, but in the end he stands in the mud and cannot even move. However, our hero is very determined and, as if throwing off the fluff, with a stream of energy breaks all the shackles from the mud, with every second he becomes stronger. Not understanding what is happening, the attacker watches this picture and cannot believe that in just half an hour this guy has become many times stronger. Saying that now his opponent will be in a lot of pain, Lucas needs his shoulder, which is a little stiff from the mud that hung before, but now he feels great. The next moment, with monstrous force and speed, he strikes the enemy, breaking all the walls around from the sound wave. The villain didn't even have time to react. He flies away and hits the asphalt a couple of times. Once again, out of despair, he tries to fire mud projectiles from a distance. Then Lucas says that he didn't understand that this is useless and repels the entire attack with one movement of his hand. From the acquired speed, the dirt does not even have time to stick to the body. Seeing that the dirt does not stick, but immediately crumbles, as if touching a flame, the villain makes no more attempts and, shocked, reassures himself that such blows will definitely not affect him. His guesses are absolutely wrong. The next blow of the main character literally tears the criminal into small pieces. But oddly enough, the rest of the body, even after this, begins to regenerate and piece together the bandit's body again. Feeling that he has found the key to victory, Lucas smiles and wonders if the villain is going to forever restore his pathetic, disfigured body. Realizing that a lot of dirt has gone to waste, the psycho thinks that if he continues like this, his dirt will completely dry up. He needs to finish as soon as possible and uses his manifestation called the mud storm. Our hero finds himself inside a huge mud tornado. Then, gathering all his strength, Lucas decides to just hit underneath him and dispel all this dirt with a shock wave. It was a great idea. At the sight of the monstrous impact, a huge crater appears, as if a rocket had just landed there. Having accepted defeat, the villain thinks that perhaps this hero is new, 
he scattered the manifestation with the pressure of the wind and needs to get out as soon as possible. But it seems that this outcome of events does not suit Justice's successor, because he intends to put an end to the criminal here and now. This turns out to be difficult to do. The enemy's regeneration is very strong, even ten days will not be enough for him to completely destroy all the dirt. Then realizing that the power that he receives with the transformation into justice until now he could not use 100%, since he still cannot control such a volume of power, but he is able to take it for an instant. One martial artist said that it is not necessary to bring the body to exhaustion all the time. It is much more important to concentrate at the moment when it is really necessary. Having inhaled a full chest of air and focusing on internal energy, the main character moves his hand back a little, preparing for the last blow. This is somewhat reminiscent of a karate move. Seeing that something wrong is happening and a lot of confidence has appeared in the young guy who stands in front of him, the villain realizes that the end has come for him. With amazing and lightning-fast power, to everyone's surprise, Lucas uses his manifestation, which he calls Magnum, although this blow is even faster than a gunshot. The villain is shattered into small pieces, he will no longer be able to recover, the fight is finally over. Meanwhile, the other part of the group patrolled the area, inspecting the surroundings, but so far they still could not find a single villain. Noticing the tension and close observation of Thomas's actions, he asks if Camilla is too vigilant and mistrustful of him. The girl replies that now she has no good reason to trust him and asks why he infiltrated the Union team if his goal is to kill villains, which is such a necessity. Saying that the interlocutor is right, Thomas claims that they have not yet achieved such a strong relationship for him to tell all his plans for the future. Suddenly Camilla says to stop and points to a nearby building showing that only there in the entire area there is a light on and this is suspicious. Not understanding how this girl noticed this small, barely noticeable light. The guy says that he can check, but there are strong chains hanging on the door. This turns out to be no problem. Turning his hand into a bone hammer, Thomas tears them apart, seemingly without even exerting minimal effort. Entering the room, they saw that there was nothing suspicious there. Maybe someone just left and forgot to turn off the light. The guy, Looking around the room, finds some strange switch and presses it, but the light does not turn off, which means there is another generator in the building. Camilla notes that there is a secret generator in the office, something is not clean here, after which she approaches the iron door and, with the pressure of her shadows, rips it off its hinges. Upon entering, fear and surprise appear on the faces of both characters at the same time. There were dozens of capsules with monsters there. This was probably the same laboratory of that mud psycho that Lucas had dealt with. Every small instrument was scattered on all the tables. It seems that monstrous and illegal experiments on people were carried out in this room. Having found documents and records, Thomas reads that hundreds of biological experiments were actually carried out in this ominous place. Listening to him, Camilla notices that one of the computers is connected to the network and is working. Someone must have been here recently. There is a password on the desktop computer. It looks like they'll have to carry the bodies to the team's main building. But suddenly Thomas comes up and starts trying to hack the system and succeeds. Not understanding how he did it, the girl looks suspiciously. But the guy says that according to the data there were 53 subjects in total. Most of them could not stand it and died. Each test subject was from a cast of incompetent people with untapped hero potential and the scale of the experiments was much worse than he thought. A shadow ribbon suddenly appears in front of the guy and destroys the table. Camille seems to be angry. She looks at Thomas with dissatisfaction and asks the question how he managed to crack the password so quickly. It seems he is not telling something. At this time, having dealt with the enemy, Lucas remembers the cutie Evie, who seems to be taking a mud bath. Everything seems to be fine with her. Seeing a walkie-talkie on the asphalt, which, apparently... Remain from that mud guy. The hero picks it up and from there comes the question if everything is okay with Bruce. Realizing that that psycho with dirt was named Bruce and he has an accomplice, Lucas responds, turning into a criminal, that everything is fine and he dealt with the petty heroes. In response, information is heard that a group of two people went inside the secret laboratory and the person on the other side of the radio filled everything there with explosives. Realizing that the two people who came in are Camilla and Thomas, the main character tries to find out where this place is and gives himself away. Transforming back, Lucas realizes that his comrades are in danger and need to find them as soon as possible. Meanwhile, after Camille's question, 
Thomas appears to attack her, turning his hand into a bone fist. But in fact, he quickly moves behind her and repels some strange attack, thereby saving the girl. It seems that there is someone else here besides them. The bones on Thomas's hand quickly broke as soon as they touched this toxic green liquid. At this time both heroes notice some strange man. The same liquid flows out of his hands. After it hits the wall, it immediately destroys all the walls, as if exploding them. Debris scatters throughout the room and almost covers Camille, and Thomas pushes her away with his foot, saving her from death. But unfortunately, he does not have time to jump away and is covered by a huge piece of the wall, from under which blood splashes. A stranger's face appears from the shadows, and he calmly reasons that this is it. Just like the same Camilla in front of him, he heard that she was sent on a mission by the Union team. The embittered girl shouts that since he heard about her, he came here in vain and attacks him with many shadows at once. But the enemy, kicking the ground, materializes his toxic green solution around himself and neutralizes the attack released by Camille. After which she says that this is the last place the girl visited, since death awaits her. 